The hypocrisy of the Western so-called free media is really something to, to consider. Uh, I recently gave up watching Channel 4 News, which I've been watching for some years, and gave up in, in despair at the completely one-sided and hypocritical and biased uh, versions of everything on that program, particularly John Snow. So in despair and desperation, I turned to the BBC, hoping for something a little bit better. They have a program at seven o'clock called Beyond 100 Days. Why Beyond 100 Days? I don't know, but that's what they call it anyway. Uh, Channel 4, of course, these days specializes in two themes anti-Russia and anti-Trump. So turning to the uh, beyond 100 days, I, I noticed an immediate change. Their slant is quite different. It's against Trump and against Russia, in that order. Uh, this uh, female broadcaster, blonde woman, I can't remember her name, uh, is particularly uh, adamant on, on, in, a, in a bitter hostility to Mr. Trump. Charming gentleman, of course. And the other day, you know what they discovered? That Trump was f friendly to dictators and strong men and had actually received, as an honored guest, guess who? Uh, Mohammed bin Salman, the crown prince of Saudi Arabia. Just imagine receiving a monster like that. And do you know something? These same journalists on the BBC informed us. Donald Trump never once mentioned uh, the, uh, the bombing and the uh, atrocities of the, the Saudis are committing every day in the Yemen, where they're starving the whole people to death. This is perfectly true. They never mentioned his appalling human record, uh, uh, re record on human rights in Saudi Arabia, of course. And of course, his, his, the dastardly motive of this man was quite clear. He was after the money. He was after a big trade deal. What they failed to mention is that just a few days before, the same Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia was visiting Mrs. Theresa May in number 10 Downing Street, where she was fated and wined and dined and entertained by the Queen, of course. Do you think for one moment that these people mentioned uh, the atrocities in Yemen? Or the uh, terrible human rights record, the cutting off of hands and the floggings and the public executions and the crucifixions, nice little device, that within Saudi Arabia, not a chance. And what were they after? I don't think they were after any, anything particularly moral. They were after the same as Donald Trump, a huge trade deal. Whether they actually succeeded in getting this juicy trade deal, I'm not quite sure. Yes, Yemen is a particular case in point. Here we have an absolute monstrosity taking place, a terrible violation of human rights, terrible war crimes and atrocities perpetrated by the Saudis every day with the active support of their Western backers, including not just Donald Trump, but of course also uh, Mrs. May. The British, of course, sell arms and get lavish arms uh, contracts, selling bombs which are showered, showered down on the heads of defenseless men, women and children in that terrible, uh, appalling uh, catastrophe in the Yemen every single day. Yes, and during this time, of course, the attention of Channel 4 News and of Beyond uh, 100 Days and all the other media outlets was on what? Not Yemen, no, please don't mention Yemen, don't even think about it. On East Ghouta, on the terrible human catastrophe, on the terrible war crimes perpetrated by the wicked uh, uh, Assad regime and their terrible Russian back backers against these poor defenseless people in East Ghouta. Now, I'm prepared to admit that the, the Syria, Syria in general, not just East, East Ghouta, but the whole of Syria, has been suffering terrible uh, catastrophes, a humanitarian catastrophe, for the last seven years. No question of that. The question is, if, if you probe a little bit de deeper and look at and examine the Western involvement in this uh, terrible uh, catastrophe in, in Syria, you'd have to draw the conclusion it's external intervention, ec external foreign uh, involvement in, in Syria that has been largely responsible for this catastrophe and its prolongation above what's been prolonged beyond any sense. The record of the West in relation to this is absolutely appalling. The West has consistently, well, incidentally, let me make my position clear.
If you ask me, is Sassad a dictator and a, a man resp responsible for oppression and all kinds of things? Of course he is, yes, that's true. Same as Saddam Hussein also was such a dictator. If you ask me, however, are the forces aligned against Assad any preferable? I'd have to say no. Far from it. These Islamic fanatics, these, uh, these uh, jihadi monsters, they are monsters, backed actively not just by Saudi Arabia, but by the Americans, by the CIA, CIA, by the British and so on, are responsible for the most appalling atrocities. ISIS itself, incidentally, was being backed by the West initially, until eventually they, they, they started to, to, to snap at the heels of the West as well, when of course the Americans got annoyed about it. And therefore this whole wretched business has dragged on for seven years with appalling human consequences, no question about that. Yes, but while the West concentrated its, its attention, all the attention was concentrated on, on East Ghouta, not a single word, or hardly a single word, was said about other atrocities being perpetrated by other forces elsewhere in Syria, specifically the Turkish invasion of Afrin. That was played down. You didn't see day after day reports of what is occurring, or what occurred rather, because it's now finished in Afrin with the Turkish victory. Yes, a Turkish victory at what price? This monster Erdogan, he is a monster, a member of NATO by the way, a friend until the recent period, uh, rather a problematical friend, but a friend, an ally nonetheless of American imperialism. This monster decides to, to invade and take a slice <coughs> of territory in another state, a, a sovereign state which is Syria. He, he chose as the excuse to attack Afrin an attack against so-called terrorists, by which he means the Kurdish people, the uh, YPG specifically, which is an ally of the Americans, by the way, which the Americans admit were the only viable ground force fighting against ISIS, these, uh, these monsters, these Islamic, uh, the, the real terrorists. The only, the only her heroic force fighting against these people were the Kurds. Yes, the Kurds were great heroes, the Kurds were our allies and so on. Yes, and what did they say about the Kurds now? <clears throat> not, the, not a great deal. Not very much, in fact. Once the Turks decided to attack the uh, YPG, the, the, the Kurds, alleging terrorism, the West, of course, washed its hands like Pontius Pilate, choosing to ignore these uh, atrocities which are taking place. Bombs are raining down. They say that there are credible reports that the Turks are using napalm to bomb. Who? Terrorists? Not terrorists, no. Nobody has ever furnished the slightest proof that the YPG or the uh, Kurdish fighters in, in uh, uh, Afrin ever attacked anybody outside of uh, the, the, the borders of their own area. Their whole attention was based, backed by the Americans, in a fight, a very heroic fight against uh, ISIS, against the jihadi uh, creatures. And who are fighting on the side of the Turks now? Who are the Turks using against these heroic uh, freedom fi fighters, these Kurdish fighters in Afrin? The jihadis, including so-called ex-members of ISIS, who flocked to the Turkish banner after the Turkish money, of course, the loot in order to attack and murder and pillage and burn and destroy in Afrin in the name of what? In the name of a struggle against terrorism. And who supports this? Well, our own dear Foreign Secretary Boris Johnson has come out in, in favour of the Turkish right to defend itself. Uh, Donald Trump said the same thing. While he deplored, they all deplore violence, do they not? Of course, they, they, they hold their hands up in horror about the, the violence. Yes, didn't stop Donald Trump from saying at, 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 at the back of his hand, oh yes, but the Turkish, we recognize the, the, the right of the Turkish people to defend themselves. Defend themselves against who? I repeat, and I insist, there was no threat from the Kurds in, uh, in the It is a lie, it is a, it's a damned lie. And of course, now we have the situation. The other day, the Turkish announced proudly that they'd won a victory. Erdogan celebrated this in, uh, in Turkey, in Ankara, big celebrations and so on and so forth. The Turkish flag is flying over Afrin. Yes, but Afrin is not part of Turkey. Afrin is part of Syria, a sovereign state, now being invaded by a member of NATO, by uh, Erdogan and his gang, with the most appalling violence.
indiscriminate slaughter of men, women and children, civilians, not terrorists, civilians, harmless people in the main. According to the recent reports, up to 200,000 civilians have fled from Afrin in terror in the face of this terrible violence that is uh, taking place. What's the attitude of the West? An attitude of the same abject hypocrisy which I, I started off by mentioning. Oh yes, the Germans protest, of course, the democratic German government, uh, Angela Merkel. Yes, the Germans are still selling tanks and other war material to the Turks. So are the others. The Americans, well, they protest and they complain and so on, but they do nothing, of course. Because naturally, in the words of Donald Trump, the Turks have got the right of self, the sacred right of self-defense. And you see this, this, behind this appalling screen of hypocrisy, you have the terrible suffering of the, uh, the Kurdish people. One has, to be very, one has to feel sorry for the Kurds. The Kurdish people have always been betrayed, always, when their leaders foolishly placed their trust in this or that foreign friendly government, in this case, the United States of America, the upholders of democracy, of the rights of small nations. Yes, the imperialists always stand for the rights of self-determination of small nations for their own cynical purposes, like pawns on a chessboard. They use them like so much small change in petty uh, trading in their international dealings. You know, a diplomat once said, and the Kurdish people had better remember this, uh, nations have no friends, only interests. And it's only the crude interests of American imperialism that's being pursued here. Incidentally, the Russians have behaved no better in this game, this cynical game with the, with the Kurdish people. Originally they were supporting the Kurds, but because Putin now wants to deal with Erdogan, probably to, to cover up his attack on uh, Erbil, the, 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 the remaining stronghold of the uh, jihadis in Syria, he wanted the Turks to to give him a free hand. So he, uh, he's allowed the Turks, in effect, to have a free hand, at least so far, against the Kurdish people in, in, in Afrin. That's the way this cynical game of power politics is being played. And of course, at the end of the day, as is always the case, it's the poor people, the ordinary people of Syria, and the Kurdish people above all, who are victims of this uh, colossal great game of power politics, which is purely in the interest of a handful of wealthy people who, in effect, are only interested in markets, oil, money, wealth, and power. And that, of course, my friends, is the reality of the world situation, which, if you look uh, carefully enough, you will find carefully hidden behind this smokescreen of cynical propaganda about humanitarianism, democracy, and all of the rest of the nonsense which we see paraded before our eyes day after day in our wonderful free Western media and press.